Well, hello there, it's Keith here, and this is lesson three of the 6809 Hello World series. We're going to be getting a Hello World working on the Vectrex this time. And the Vectrex was especially interesting to me. This was the reason I started learning 6809, because the Vectrex is really unlike any um, system that's been released for the home users ever, to be honest, as far as I know. It's the only vector-based system that's ever come out for a home system. Now, the vectors, of course, means that rather than drawing things in pixels, and these days, don't get me wrong, very high resolution pixels, the Vectrex was actually moving a beam and drawing images with a beam. So the resolution was arguably infinite and it just doesn't work like any other system would because usually you're working in some definition by pixels or you know, you've got some kind of texture that you're applying to a grab bitmap screen but this really doesn't work like that at all and so everything's a bit different and I thought that was a bit fun. Now we're going to be looking at the basics of getting a simple message on the screen with the Vectrex which is what we're going to need to get started with anything else. So let's go over to the code and let's see what getting Hello World running on a vector-based system is like. OK, so the Vectrex is a cartridge-based system, of course, and we're going to be um, compiling. Um, let's have a look and just check it really works, because sometimes they bug out. and Sometimes my emulators don't work on Windows 10 as well. OK, so here's Hello World. We've printed this message to the screen. Now, you'll notice this is all uppercase, but the uh, message we were trying to show might not be. For example, if I do LLO here, well, that's um, going to cause us some problems. Now, at, at the moment here, we're doing a very simple display here. We're just showing a string directly using the firmware functions. Now, usually I try and go direct to the hardware. It's going to be incredibly different, difficult with the Vectrex. We literally have to move um, a beam around the screen and, and send directional coordinates and things. It's far too complex for me at this stage, so we're not going to do that. We're just going to let the firmware do the work for us today. So um, I'm breaking my own typical rule here, but um, the Vectrex is so different to everything else I've covered, I had to really. Now, we're going to define a cartridge. First thing we're doing is turning padding off. Now, padding would align everything to a 16-bit boundary, but that would cause some problems for us defining our header and things. So for simplicity, I'm turning that off just so, um, so we know. So it's basically what we see is what we get now. Our cartridge starts at memory address 0, and we need to have a copyright string at the start. Now, this G here is actually a copyright symbol, so that will be converted for us. And that has to be identical. We can't really change that. I think maybe there's like maybe there's like one or two letters we can change, or the date or something. But basically, it's got to be fixed. Then we have some information for our splash screen. Now, if you saw my emulator, you might have noticed there was not a splash screen. Well, why wasn't there a splash screen? Well, there wasn't a splash screen because I've nobbled it. I've taken it off. Um, I'll just modify my own boot command here. Um, I've actually modified the ROM of the Vectrex so that it starts up faster because otherwise we get all of this nonsense. Um, and then we have to wait for the Vectrex to shout, shout about how amazing it is. Come on. And then here's our splash screen, learnasm.net. And then finally we get Hello World. Well, that took a hell of a long time, especially because I can't remember how to get past it. So I modified the boot ROM, and we've got this myrom.dat, which skips past that startup screen. So that's um, this is what we're using to get things started a little quicker. But it means we never see the um, title message that we're actually defining here. Now, the music address here is the sound that plays during our splash screen. And we're just pointing to a firmware gen generic one. This is the position of our message. And this is our message, and our message is learnasm.net, which is one of my websites. So we're putting that on there for our own fame and success. Dubious um, whether that will work, but anyway, we'll, we'll try. So we're defining the position there. And of course, you can put your own game name there and um, just you've got to reposition it to make it nice and in the center. So that's the end of the header there. And then our main program code will start. And you'll notice there's no end to the ROM here. That seems to work just fine. So we don't need to pad it to anything. Now, the first thing we're doing here, uh, we're defining a direct page as C8. Now, the C8 range is the RAM on this system. Zero isn't RAM, as you can see from the fact this ROM's here. So um, the direct page is being pointed to C8 here, and that will be effectively what's known as our zero page on system, some system. Now, the thing you've got to understand is we have to change the direct page when we use some of the functions. And you need to check the documentation to know which. So this text pause function needs the direct page to point to D0. The D0XX range is the hardware registers. So it's using that, that direct page as a fast way of altering the hardware registers there. Now, I've set it to RAM here just because that's what I'd expect a system to start with. But you can see we're pretty much immediately changing it to D0. But again, as I say, just for 
just for you if you're modifying things and trying to play with stuff yourself so that you know what's going on. I thought we'd start off with a normal way of doing things. Now, the function we're using to draw text to the screen is a multi-line one at F38C here. We pass this a, a address in the U register, the user stack as it's known, and then we will show that to the screen. So that's showing that to the screen for us. And we just got to make sure that the direct page is pointing to D0 here. Now, the string is in a weird format. We have an X, a Y position, a string, the string is hexadecimal 8 terminated, and we can have multiple strings within the same same sequence. So if I just copy these lines, but then I take the zero off the first one, but I change the Y position to be 107, and I run again. Well, now you can see we've got Hello World twice. So we can use this to show multiple strings, and we'll be using that later on. Now, there is other commands to show a single string and things, but this, I, th I think, is the most useful to us, and you'll learn why in the next example. Now, before we use the text routine here, we need to specify the font size, and we're doing that just up here. We're using FC38, which is a small font size. If I just run this here, you can see it's pretty small, but you can use alternate settings here, and another good one is F848, if I run this now, we've got a nice big font. And uh, you can use other settings as well, but those are the two I would recommend you consider. Now, when we print a string to the screen on the Vectrex, that's not enough to keep it on the screen. Because the, the screen will clear as the phosphors fade, we need to draw it again every single frame. So what we're doing here is we're waiting for a new frame to start with F192, and then we're drawing everything again. Now, if I take out that code, if I put the infinite loop here, we're now only drawing a single time to the screen. And maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't. It, it was gone already. So we have to redraw the image over and over again. So that's a bit of a limitation of the Vectrex that we have to repeatedly draw our image every single frame because of the way the Vectrex works. As I say, everything's different on the Vectrex. So there we go. So anyway, that's getting our Hello World message to the screen. And that's how we can get the most simple Hello World running. Now, how do we compile it? Well, we're using ASW, Mac OS here. The source file is percent one in this example because this is a batch file, so that would be your hello world.asm or whatever. We're specifying 6809 CPU and we're specifying to output a listing file, and this is useful for debugging. I was having some awful problems with the direct page the other day because I was using this alternate direct page and then I was using an STA $AT or something like that, uh, trying to save to the direct page. The assembler was saving in to save to 0080, even though I told it with the um, assume command that the direct page should be at C8. Um, I thought it would have worked, but I actually had to specify C8 80, and then it was removing the C8 in the in the compiled binary. Uh, I know that probably sounds very confusing to you if you're just starting out. The point I'm making is um, if you're just starting out, the listing file is possibly not very useful to you. But once you're getting the, to grips with things and if you're playing with a weird system, uh, these listing files really help you out. So try and export them if your assembler supports it. I'm defining a symbol here, build VTX. My multi-platform code has modules that switch on or off depending on symbols. So that's to allow for that. And then we're outputting a file called prog.build. This isn't a cartridge yet on this assembler. If that works okay, we're then converting that to a binary, which is a cartridge using p to bin. So that's converting the intermediary file to a binary file. That binary file can then be loaded with vexgl. That's our Vectrex emulator here. We're specifying a screen size. That's good if you've got a full HD monitor. If you haven't, it's not going to be good. So you could change that. Maybe we could change that to 600 or something. If you've got a, a smaller monitor. Um, there we go, it's a bit smaller. So um, yeah, so you can pick a, pick something that's appropriate, but for um, for the full HD monitor I do my most of my work on, I thought um, it better have it nice and big for the viewers out there. So yeah, that's what we're using there. We're specifying my custom ROM cartridge here, which as I say, skips over that splash screen. If you don't want it for some reason, turn it off. If you've got a better custom ROM cartridge of your own, then great, put that in. And then we're specifying our cartridge here, prog.bin. And that starts up our program. Now. That's the simple example out the way. But in all of these tutorials, I do a more advanced example. And this shows a monitor, which is the contents of the registers here, and then a mem dump to the screen. I do this on all of my tutorials. Now, these use a print char routine. And this print char routine needs to print a single character to the screen. And now I need a new line routine to start a new line. If I haven't got those, the mon multi-platform monitor will not work. You can see the multi-platform monitor is included just here. I don't go into the details of how that works because it's complicated and it's well beyond what we want to do today. Now, 
I need to get a print chart and a new line routine to work on this system. How can I do it? Well, if you remember, our F38C routine was drawing multiple strings to the screen. Now, if we were to define a buffer with a sort of dummy string in it and then to tag extra characters to the end, replacing the hexadecimal 80 zero each time, we would allow us to build up a string one character at a time. And if we were to define a new line and start a new string below that, we would be able to create a new line routine as well. And then we could draw that buffer to the screen every frame, allowing us to draw a screen that was simulating a bitmap screen on this vector-based system. And that's what I've done. Now, maybe there's an easier way of doing it, but that's all I could think of. And it has worked sufficiently well to do the Hello World. Now, you'll see we have to have an infinite loop here that's redrawing that screen. But the, this will effectively allow us to simulate a bitmap screen. Now, we're defining some variables here. The um, main one is text RAM. This is a buffer. It, the length of it will depend on how many characters we've drawn to the screen. The um, text data pos is the position of the next byte within that buffer that is going to be the next character to be added to the screen. And we're rem remembering the y pos for when we add a new line, when we use the new line command each time, we'll add effectively a new string to the bottom of our buffer. So if we did a new line and printed hello world, we would have effectively done that. I know this is a bit complicated. If you don't understand it, you can ignore it. But um, this is how I had to make it work. OK, so we've got an initialization routine here. We're setting the font as before. And we're creating a dummy string with just a first line that just ends with a hexadecimal 80 and then a 0. Whenever we want to print a character, what we're doing is we're loading the position within the buffer that the next character will go to. We're then, in this case, converting lowercase to uppercase. This routine can print lowercase. Well, it can convert it to uppercase. It can't print the characters, but it will accept them. Um, and it's then storing that within the, the position in the buffer. And then it's finishing off that string with an end of line and a zero for end of all strings. Effectively, it's writing that. So effectively, our print char routine is, if, is doing this adding more characters, but keeping the end at the end so that the string routine will work. The new line routine is effectively taking the Y position that we have in this variable here, moving it down by one line, and then it's storing that as the start of a new line. So effectively, it's doing this. It's basically putting a new line here, but it's subtracting 8. So I guess this will be 119 here. And then it's starting a new line, which will start off being blank. So this will be effectively just like that. And this zero wouldn't be here anymore. So that's kind of what the new line command is doing. If you imagine that this text hello is the buffer. And as I say, I know, I know it's complicated, but it's just this is how this is what I had to do to get the, um, sim the simple hello world working. So yeah, th that's what those do. They're basically manipulating a buffer that we can then draw to the screen with the same text pos routine as before. And you can see this draw vector screen routine has the same frame weight here that will wait for the next V blank. And so we can effectively just put in whatever our final loop of our example, this command here, and that will work just fine. Now, the only problem with the vectrex is, and this is unavoidable, you'll see there's a kind of line moving up the screen here. Well, the more text we put on the screen, and it's effectively this fake bitmap text, because it's made up of lots and lots of lines, well, the more text we put onto the screen, the um, slower things get. And if we put too much text on the screen, um, things get flickery, because basically it's taking so long to draw all the, all the lines, and the V-blank has occurred, and the phosphors are fading. So. Um, that, that's just the way the Vectrex is. But you can see here when we've drawn this, but each of these characters is made up of lots and lots of lines, unfortunately. If we had a vector-based font where an A was just sort of three lines, maybe things would work a bit better. But that, that's not what the Vectrex firmware is providing us here, and so that's not what we're using. But as I said before, though, this routine, while it can't print lowercase to the screen, it can now take it because we've got that conversion in there. So when I print hello world in lowercase, it's converted to uppercase, but at least it shows, whereas before we were showing garbage. 
anyway that's all we're covering today um we're going to be coming back to the vectrix later on we're going to be learning to um, read the joystick make some sounds and we're going to draw some vectors to the screen i have a something resembling my chibiko character in a vector so we'll see how to get that onto the screen but anyway i hope you found this interesting if you have you know please like and subscribe it really helps if you like the videos because youtube recommends based on likes and if you subscribe it increases my motivation to keep working on writing more and more tutorials for more and more obscure systems that i know nothing about because that takes a lot of time and it's a bit stressful anyway whatever you do i hope you enjoy the 6809 and i hope you found some interest in the vetrix because i think it's fascinating thanks for watching today and goodbye